the maritime industry is under pressure on many fronts. Its highest priority is reducing gas emissions in order to protect the environment. And this is only possible by reducing fuel consumption, while at the same time increasing efficiency. Fuel efficiency is where the greatest savings in operating costs can be made. But to reach this efficiency, a smooth hull is extremely important because biofouling can increase friction and lead to higher fuel consumption. In addition, global shipping and ballast water discharge risk the inadvertent spreading of invasive species from one eco-region to another. For this reason, a smooth, clean hull as well as clean niche areas are essential. But can that be achieved with anti-fouling systems? The answer is yes, but only if the ship sails as planned and the choice of anti-fouling paint is adapted to its operational profile. Yet an increasing number of ships no longer travel as part of regular traffic. Instead, they are chartered and change their profile. The consequence, traveling through unplanned waters, extended idle periods when moored without cargo or in front of congested ports, or simply moving too slowly can cause fouling to occur on the hull. Anti-fouling systems fail to be effective. The solution to improve hull performance is underwater cleaning of the hull, as is currently standard practice. Cleaning takes place mainly in straits like Gibraltar, canals like Suez or Panama, on shipping lanes near Malta, Greece and the Canaries, as well as in or in front of harbors. The problem is that in most cases, cleaning takes place without collecting the organic material and without filtration and separation of the removed organisms and particles of paint. Furthermore, cleaning is often not carried out carefully enough Many surfaces remain covered by organisms or are cleaned so aggressively that the anti-fouling coating is removed. Anti-fouling systems, with the exception of hard AF coatings, are not designed to be cleaned. And in cases of severe fouling, there is a danger of removing several layers when cleaning. This causes not only living organisms to be released into the water, but also chemical biocytes from the anti-fouling paint. Yet there are now techniques available for underwater cleaning with capture, retention tanks and separation facilities. The CLEAN project aims to develop requirements for German seaports so that underwater cleaning can be commissioned and carried out with ease. This could, on the one hand, help meet the shipping company's need for smooth hulls and, at the same time, protect the environment through the use of sustainable cleaning technology. Ich denke, dass der Bedarf besteht. Also neben den ökologischen Vorteilen, die die Reinigung mit sich trägt, sind I think that the demand is there. Alongside the environmental benefits that cleaning has, the international rules have been strengthened, as has protection against the spread of invasive species. If this cleaning is carried out in Germany, it requires a special permit in accordance with the Water Act. Here it's important that the regulations are set by the authorities, so it's clear what is and isn't allowed. In Bremen, however, we don't want to give the impression that underwater cleaning in general is encouraged. Instead, we want to clear the way for innovative technologies with functioning retention systems so that we can test them thoroughly. We approve the applications if everything that is cleaned off is also captured and filtered, including the wastewater, and if we have confirmation that no invasive species will be introduced. Und eine Bestätigung oder eine Sicherung ist, dass invasive Arten nicht eingetragen werden können. Some companies are already offering environmentally friendly cleaning, like DG Diving from Finland. As part of the CLEAN project, biocide-free hard coatings were cleaned on the Vega and Polarstern research vessels to demonstrate the effectiveness of the technology. An on-site visit in Helsinki, where the underwater body of a passenger ferry is to be cleaned. The professionals from DG Diving have developed their own capture and filtration technology, which has been in use for several years. Here, the biocide-free hard coatings on ferries and cargo ships operating in the Baltic Sea are cleaned. My name is Mika Rouhola. I am the Chief Operating Officer at uh, DG Diving Group, LTD, Finnish diving company. And uh, we carry out Hull cleanings quite often 
in Finland, in the Baltic Sea, elsewhere as well, and for example in Sweden. We use uh, brush cards, brush cards uh, which are, have uh, nylon brushes, and then we have a vacuum system and filtration collection system, and we operate with divers. In my opinion, the cleaning is is uh, efficient, more efficient with divers. Like in Finland, we have a variable visibility. In some places, we have only maybe half a meter. In some cases, five meters visibility. And I'm not specialized in ROVs, but I I know that uh, what the divers' eyes can see. And how many vessels do you clean roughly per year? We clean roughly about 500 vessels. Not actually vessels, but we have cleaning times about 500. Clean same vessels many times per year. We clean vessels mostly in the, in the biofilm stage or otherwise when there is not so much falling yet. But it's depending on the customers. Some customers want uh, vessels to be cleaned once or twice per year and some customers want the vessels to be cleaned in every two weeks. So it depends on the vessel's road as well. Some vessels travel for many weeks and some vessels are at ports daily or some couple of times per week so it's possible then and what comes to the cleaning we clean mostly all of the vessels at ports there are some tankers which are cleaned at anchorages the cleaning of the vessel when it's in the in the in the biofilm states, it's much more quicker and it's much more uh, cost-wise for the customer. Avoiding the use of biocide-containing anti-fouling coatings makes particular sense when it comes to ferries, as they have a high level of activity and shorter idle times when waiting in ports. In addition, the Baltic Sea poses a greater risk of drift ice, which could completely scratch off a ship's anti-fouling system in winter. That's why, instead of anti-fouling paint, some Baltic shipping lines use hard anti-corrosive coatings with ice class and have them cleaned every two weeks during the summer. Uh, Viking Line is operating in the northern Baltic Sea and then our main routes are, are between Finland and Sweden and, and, and uh, almost all, all lines are also visiting uh, Åland Islands. The f first and the most important background is, is the environmental aspect uh, because uh, we, we, we want clean seas <laughs> and, and uh, it's all, of course of an image question also for a passenger company. These uh, anti-fouling uh, coatings, they are not um, very w working very well in the icy conditions. When we have a normal sailing year with the normal winter, as we call that we had before <laughs> at least, uh, so we start the cleaning in, in May. Uh, about in May, for, for the first cleaning, and, and then we have about four weeks, depending a little bit of, of the weather. Uh, but during the summer months, uh, we say from June to August, we have about three weeks interval, th three weeks between the cleaning. And then in the, in the autumn, when the, the weather keep, goes a little bit uh, colder and the sun is not shining as bright anymore, then we go back to four weeks. We are satisfied because it reduces so much the fuel costs. Every time it's worth it to do it. And of course, uh, also the, the coating costs, which we are decreasing by this system, because if, if we use this epoxy-based uh, hard coatings instead of uh, anti-fouling. The docking uh, interval is, is uh, following the normal docking intervals. We don't have to do any, any uh, dockings after. It's about uh, two dockings in a five-year period. Uh, re replace about 5% of the coating. They are blasting, spot blasting the damages, and then, then we are just painting the spots which have been blasted. It is therefore more effective, under certain conditions, to carry out regular cleaning, ensuring a smooth hull which does not transfer species from one eco-region to another.
Environmental Authority is currently working on an approval platform and flowchart that will allow underwater cleaning of ships' hulls in the city's ports. This proof that the respective hull has a biocide-free hard coating and the commissioning of a cleaning company that uses demonstrably effective and environmentally safe technology. The wastewater may have to be disinfected before it can be discharged into the sea, depending on which waters the vessel had previously been sailing in. We carry out the participation procedure as part of the permit granting process, while the Nature Conservation Department is consulted about the environmental conditions. As an employee of the Senate, I'm responsible for climate protection, the environment, mobility, urban development and housing from our local offices in Bremerhaven. That is also where the permit granting process is initiated, once the application forms are submitted in full. As an international port, we will study these regulations and then adapt or adopt them, depending on their compatibility with German law. We intend to look at other European ports to see how they manage this issue and coordinate with them. We also have active discussions with ports in Germany, so we can find as unified an approach as possible, taking into account their respective locations. Considering the large number of leisure boats in the water, it's worth considering whether regular cleaning would be an alternative to anti-fouling coatings for them too. Leisure boats spend most of their time at berth and are moved around far less than commercial vessels. That's why it's hard to achieve an effective fouling protection, especially in marine areas. Harbors for leisure boats are therefore exposed to considerably greater contamination from anti-fouling biocidal chemicals. This is due, on the one hand, to the almost permanent presence of the boats in the harbors, but also to frequent unprotected washing of the vessels with high-pressure jets after the season, either on the slip or in the harbor area. This results in contaminated water flowing directly into the harbor, Professor Emeritus for Environmental Chemistry at the University of Stockholm, Brissa Eklund, has studied this problem. The longer the land had been used as a, a boat yard, the heavier contaminations of uh, copper and zinc. In boat yards, uh, very many uh, toxic substances are uh, accumulated. Not only copper and zinc, but also organic tin substances, PCB, arsenic, mercury, and other things, and often in very high concentrations. Those uh, concentrations were so high, so the spoonful of the soil should be dangerous to small children. In addition, during winter, when the anti-fouling coating is sanded off and then reapplied, the ground is not always covered, which can lead to further chemical contamination in the harbor. However, cleaning the boats on a washing area with a retention system and collection tanks, both after and, if necessary, during the season, reduces the burden on the environment considerably. For several years, stationary cleaning facilities have been erected along the Swedish and Finnish coasts, in which boat hulls are cleaned with rotating brushes inside a floating basin which catches the contaminated water runoff. The cleaning process is intended for biocide-free, abrasion-resistant hard coatings that are available in specialized shops for yacht equipment. A certificate can be presented as proof of these criteria. When the boats are launched in May, you can see that the, the concentrations of copper and zinc is increasing during the boat seasons and peaking in maybe in July. And then when the boats are getting out in the wintertime, when the boats are out of the water, the concentrations of copper and zinc is again down to normal. The result is that each boat owner has a certificate that, for example, his boat is free of agonotin or free of copper. And this certificate is important for the marina or for the municipality if he can stay in the harbor, right? Yeah, many boat clubs today and many municipalities, they demand this kind of certificate uh, from the boaters. And you have the famous Barnacle app to give an indication for the boat owners when they have to clean. We have uh, observance along the Baltic Sea and they are reporting into central administrations that now the barnacles are started to settle on the, in this area. And then as a boater, you can subscribe 
on an SMS where you can get this information. When a boat needs to be cleaned can be determined using uncoated test plates, underwater cameras connected to a smartphone, and in Sweden, a warning app to alert users about the settlement of barnacles. For soft fouling, handheld cleaning devices and cleaning mats are provided. My name is Christian Feldroff, I'm the founder of Seaboost. And uh, we started 2014 with, with mechanical uh, brushing. You can brush keels, you can brush um, rudders, you can brush uh, better the water lines. Seaboost also sells a so-called turf, a plastic mat with a rough surface that is fixed in place at the berth. Yeah. It's, it's construction with a very rough uh, uh, plastic. Oh, yes, that's, that's very yeah. stiff. Yeah. 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 But when is the best time to clean? Of course, it's better if you can clean in early stage. And, uh, and I think that it's the best way is to do it uh, with, with the power brushes, a quick fix. And then you do it more, more frequently and, and then you put more efforts uh, after that, that the barnacles have settled. And what does the future hold? We uh, think that the solution will be a mix of, of, of different cleaning devices and a suitable coating. All uh, biocide-based coatings are more or less based on erosion yeah. and uh, or friction to get the erosion. And, 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 and when you brush them, there will be a lot of, of, of uh, uh, microplastics and, and, and also biocides. The future depends on many factors, including the willingness of the industry and the authorities to chart a new path. Our project has shown, uh, on the background of many discussions with uh, cleaning companies, uh, shipping lines, authorities and dockyards, that there is um, technology at hand which can be used, which is practically uh, usable and feasible. It's economically feasible and some shipping lines in the Baltic Sea are using this technique, but in the future for a permit uh, to clean in German seaports, it will be necessary that the vessel shows up with a biofouling management plan, proactive cleaning in a biofilm stage and on non-toxic coatings. On the side of the cleaning company, the cleaning company has to prove that they have a technology with full capture of the removed fouling and separation and filtration of the fouling for in a regular deposit. And these both requirements are necessary for a permit in the future. Moreover, we want to have the situation and the challenge that all underwater coatings in the future shall be biodegradable and made of non-fossil raw materials and then we have a better perspective for the problem of microplastics. But we are very confident that the chemical industry will uh, do a lot of research and development that we will have it in the near future. The clean project will continue in close cooperation with water authorities, cleaning companies and shipping lines. The first permits for effective and environmentally compatible in-water cleaning are expected to be granted soon.